Today I took the dwarf telescope out to nearby Napanee Falls. And I did this because I wanted to show you how it worked during the day. And I had a lot of really cool stuff to tell you about it, but unfortunately due to some technical issues, I basically lost all the audio. So I'm just gonna VO it from here and give you an idea of what we're talking about. So yes, this is a tiny telescope. And not only that, but it's a completely remote controlled tiny telescope. Although I am using the iOS beta firmware, so it doesn't have all the advanced tracking features yet, it is actually still very usable. And today, out here at the falls, I wanted to use it to take a picture of some birds. However, there were three guys fishing. So I wanted to do a quick video of these three guys fishing to start, and then we'll see if we can find some birds afterwards. The big thing I want to talk about here in this video is that this camera has a lot of zoom. Here is a wide field shot from the camera that we can see here through the app. And you can sort of see here that this is about, I'm gonna say 24 millimeters, which is to say it's, an, it's a wide angle shot in most camera systems. And then we can see the little box that shows us the three fishermen. And we zoom in and boom, here they are. That is quite a significant amount of magnification. And we can see here that the image is actually quite good. Then I decided let's point it at some birds. So here we have a Canada goose. Now this is probably as close that you can get to a Canada goose and live to tell the tale. So you can see it actually frames the goose up pretty nicely. Although when it does get up, it does get a little bit out of frame. Normally if I'd have tracking, I'd hope that it would actually track and move a little bit, but probably would need to take another five, 10 steps back in order to really get a good goose picture. However, here are some mallard ducks. Now, in this case, they are swimming, so I did try to manually follow them using the telescope with the iOS app. In the future, when the app is fully released, there will actually be a tracking system. I've talked to people who have the Android version and apparently it works rather well. Now, we're gonna come back here to our fishermen again. Now I've actually moved significantly close to them. As you can see, they are much bigger in the, the field of view. And the reason I did this was because I wanted to show you guys here the actual depth of field of this camera. It actually is quite wide for a lens. You can see here where the fisherman in front is totally in focus. And now that I've moved to this fisherman behind, who's about, I'd say three meters or 10 feet behind, you can even see with him that him and his fishing rod, et cetera, are still in focus. Maybe not perfectly focused, but focused enough that we can see that exactly what he's doing. Now, finally, I did want to take a Hail Mary shot and I did look up to the top of the smokestack that was nearby. It's been decommissioned, but it has a whole bunch of pigeons that are flying on it. And I wanted to give you an idea of what this looks like when you're looking through a lot of air current. And you can see that these pigeons and stuff are doing pretty good. Um, we do have a clear sky, so we have that bluish tinge in the background. And overall, again, this all being in full automatic, this all looks pretty well. Now, one thing I would really like to see, however, is that this camera does 24 frames a second, which is great. But in this case, it would have been nice, even if I was taking a resolution bump, to get a slightly faster frame rate, because when the birds were flying in and out, it would have been nice to slow down. I know if I had brought my GH6 with me, I could have really slowed down this footage. So for birding, this actually ends up being a pretty good electronically assisted birding scope. You can point it at your target, and it will give you a nice image on your phone or tablet, and you can say, hey, now I know what I'm looking at. And since you can save the video, you can refer to it later if you do find something and you don't know how to identify it, AKA, I'm pretty sure those are pigeons, but if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. So if you are interested in learning more about the Dwarf 2, I do have a playlist which you can check out where I'm gonna run it through all its different paces for all of my use cases. But also, if you are interested in buying it and you wanna help the channel because you know, gas money to drive all over the place. I do have an affiliate link in the description below. Doesn't cost you any extra, but it does give me a little bit of money to basically help cover the cost of this channel. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video when I take the Dwarf 2 out at night and actually use it for its primary purpose, astrophotography.